Digital mobile agents across the three leading service providers hold over 100,000 people in direct employment, according to official sources in the telecom business. Not only from the regulatory point of view in terms of the Bank of Uganda guidelines, but also as uh, financial uh, sector players, we are required to do end-to-end uh, -end AML, anti-money laundering, uh, monitoring, and it, it uh, therefore defeats uh, there's a part of the transactions that you won't be able to pick because uh, the, you don't know the player who is, who is doing that transaction. The agents in the rural areas are encouraged to have more of the cash because float is going to come from the urban areas and therefore they should have cash to uh, issue the customers. And it, it also comes back to the bulk payments. But the Agent Network Accelerator Survey, Uganda Country Report 2015, indicates the current structure of these digital finance retailers in respect to quality of delivery. Those users to mobile wallet users, and that's a really hard transition for them. They are unable and really struggling to do that. Um, I think it, it is also a function of incentives. Like, it, it is possible that agents have inherent incentives to encourage OTC transactions. How can you change that incentive structure? and incentivize agents to actually have more mobile wallet usage. Like the findings also state at least 79% of agents in Kampala serve more than one provider and non-exclusivity dropped from 16% in 2013 to 64% in 2015. I think this is just the first step in breaking the exclusivity. We must achieve 100% non-exclusivity and bring digital money to be interpretable to be accessible. There is a barrier. Without doing that, the market will get shortcut because I don't belong to the other network and yet my friend I'm sending money belongs to that network. What do I do? I'm stuck. But there is a shortcut. The agent can help me. So some of these initiatives need us to research a bit more about the human behavior. Illustrating the need for better training of mobile cash agents, the report notes that less than 45% of agents in Uganda obtain refresher training compared to 73% in Tanzania. What we are seeing is that probably customers are being charged more because the agents actually probably don't display the tariffs and therefore they just, because they are actually sending on your behalf. So they can tell you if they feel that you don't know, they see that you don't know what, uh, what are the tariffs and all that, they actually tell you any figure. So what we are seeing probably in Senegal and Pakistan, which have official OTC, actually the OTC is actually legalized and probably that's why we are seeing more. Uh, they, are, they are more profitable than probably these other countries. The architects of the study, financial sector deepening Uganda, argue that the highlights of the constraints of the retail and of the digital finance space needs more attention. If the uh, MNOs have an, uh, an Apex association, uh, and of course the financial service providers already have uh, an Apex organization, the UBA, uh, we would be uh, interested to hear what they want to do uh, and sort of work with them to establish a standard, uh, some sort of certificate uh, for these agents. The sector regulator, Uganda Communications Commission and Bank of Uganda have since established regulations governing mobile commerce, although a legal framework is yet to be put in place. Digital finance has over the past five years turned out to be a critical growth area of the telecom industry, contributing about 35% of the gross earnings, albeit with the urgent call now for better compliance. Be interested in uh, developing uh, a curriculum. We, we would be interested in those long-term sustainable issues uh, and working with their Apex, uh, Apex organizations because that really would be a more sustainable and long-term solution to to this and so uh well, without pumping in money we would actually be interested in funding and providing some 